Oh, perfect. So um, this is a joint work with Alex, and I'm going to talk about how to trace people in the Umbra South Address scheme on Ethereum. Um, we are both from Official Lawrence University, Budapest. Okay, so like the last question referred to the transparent nature of Ethereum. So we all know that Ethereum is transparent. There's a vast work already done by companies which want, like the most famous is backed by the US government, as you might possibly know. There's also a vast body of academic work. This is just tip of the iceberg and maybe the most important ones. Uh, like, and usually people talk about on-chain privacy, but I, I just want to highlight that private, we should look at anonymity and privacy preservation holistically. And, and usually people forget about uh, privacy lost or gained on, on the peer-to-peer -peer level or um, other levels. Okay, so Ethereum is pretty complete, so we can create smart contracts that allows us to uh, enhance privacy. Like most notable example is Tornado Cash that was mentioned before and was sanctioned in 2022, August. Uh, we have Aztec, and most importantly, nowadays we have Railgun. And in this talk, I'm going to focus about Umbra Cash. So this is the other side of the coin. Some companies are trying to decrease anonymity and on the other side of the coin, we also academic people are suggesting new ways to enhance anonymity and privacy. Um, yeah, I, I'm in favor of anonymity and privacy for definitely for certain applications. Um, and sadly, these days are quite dark for at least for on-chain privacy. Um, like two recently, two um, Bitcoin mixers were shut down. Samurai devs were charged by the Department of Justice. Wasabi is going to shut down, shut down their coin join services by 1st of June. Uh, but we still have, I mean, these are Bitcoin uh, services, but still I wanted to mention them. Um, okay, so Umbra Cash is, is mainly developed by Ben DiFrancesco and Matthew Solomon. It's a community founded uh, project um, and there's an EIP, so Ethereum Improvement uh, Proposal standardization is underway, so it's um, it's pretty popular. And so what's the high level idea? And then I'm going to a little bit into the te te cryptographic technical details, although I, I'm not sure if I need to do that. But anyways, so on Ethereum, typically people have a few handful of addresses, let's say one or two, and usually like let's assume that we know which address belongs to whom. Um, let's say this address belongs to Alice and then this address belongs to Bob. So anytime Alice sends, uh, let's say Alice the employer and Bob is the employee and anytime there's a transaction, then we, we could see the salary of Bob, for instance. So there's legitimate reasons for Alice to, and obviously Bob doesn't want to share with the world what his salary is on chain. So Alice wants to conceal that he sent some, she sent some money to Bob. So for this reason, um, seeing the public key of Bob, Alice can non-interactively non generate a fresh address that we call stealth address and send money to that fresh address to Bob. And afterwards, Bob can withdraw the money from this stealth address, maybe can withdraw it to an exchange address or do some other stuff on DeFi. Okay, um, so this is a schematic description of Umbra. Now let's just walk through this because this, this is important. So here we have a recipient and the, the first part, the first step of the protocol is that the recipient registers in the registry smart contract, it's public key. It's necessary for the sender to use this public key in order to generate this fresh address. And afterwards, uh, Alice, the sender, uh, can send funds to this uh, fresh address, to this staff address. It could be Ether, NFTs, or other ERC20 tokens. And you can imagine that on the blockchain, there's many staff addresses, um, hundreds, thousands, uh, tens of thousands. And these are random addresses that has never been before on the blockchain. So the recipient needs to figure out which random address, which staff address belongs to them. So the recipient scans the blockchain and decides uh, which recipient, which staff address is redeemable by them. 
uh, and you might wonder, okay, how how popular this scheme is, and um, Umbra was roughly deployed on Ethereum three years ago, and since then it had uh, tens of thousands of uh, users, also on mainnet and and other rollups. In the paper, we investigated Arbitrum, Optimism, and Polygon, and um, so this is this red line shows the when Tornado Cash was sanctioned by the SEC, and we can see that basically the adopt people or privacy cautious users kind of flocked to other privacy preserving schemes, um, and we can see that the adoption or usage of Umbra is kind of accelerated. Um, Okay, so what did we do in the paper? We analyzed the anonymity guarantees of Umbra. Uh, we defined heuristics that decrease these anonymity guarantees. We evaluated them on Ethereum mainnet and these three mentioned rollups, L2 uh, chains, and we provide simple countermeasures. Okay, so I don't know how many of you like cryptography. I do, <laughs> or if you're interested in the details. If you, if you understand the Fihaman key exchange, Basically, this whole protocol is just a twist on the Fihaman key exchange. So, how can the sender send, create non interactively a stealth address to the recipient? So, the recipient has two public keys um, a viewing public key and the spending public key. This, this algorithm is run by the sender. So, the sender takes um, the public keys of the recipient and can generate an ephemeral key R. Um, then we can obtain a shared secret uh, C, which is just the hash of uh, R times the viewing key of the recipient. And we can obtain the staff address, the staff public key like this. So CG plus the spending uh, key of the recipient and this algorithm. So now, okay, and on chain, we have this ephemeral key R and the pub, uh, public key of the staff address. And now after some times, so the sender sends the transaction with this information. And let's say whenever the, the recipient comes back online, they need to figure out which staff address belongs to them. So the recipient is going to run this algorithm, which is just a naive linear scan. Um, so what, what does the recipient do? It just tries to see whether, so the recipient can also obtain the shared secret. This is basically the simple diffie hammond uh, step of the protocol. and the recipient checks whether the left hand side equals to the public key of the self address and if if it if this is the case then the recipient is sure that that stealth transaction is meant to to them um, and note that this is a naive really simple protocol so if there are millions of transactions millions of stealth addresses on chain then the recipient needs to run this check a million times. And it, I, I think it's just interesting that how cryptocurrency problems, and, and there is, it's a huge problem. It's not a scalab, scalable uh, computation. So we want to do this work in sublinear time and space in the number of self-transactions. And the same problem uh, also occurs for Monero, Zcash, or Aztec, or any privacy-preserving cryptocurrency. Uh, so that's the price that we need to pay for privacy because we don't know whether a payment is for us or not. And I think it's just interesting that this whole problem just started a little subfield in cryptography. So uh, cryptocurrency also inspires not only network scientists and uh, graph theoreticians, but also cryptographers. Okay, so what are the anonymity guarantees that we focused on? I could give you a formal game-based uh, definitions, but I don't do this. Rather, I just uh, explain these uh, properties in plain English. So recipient anonymity means that the challenger sends, to, uh, sends a self-payment to either Alice or Bob, then the adversary cannot distinguish whether the payment was sent to Bob or Alice. And recipient unlinkability is also provided by stealth addresses means that there are two universes. In the first universe, there are two payments to either to Bob or Alice. And in the second universe, uh, the payments were sent to the same address, either Alice or Bob. And so the payment is either sent to the one person or two different person. And the adversary cannot distinguish between these two universes. 
Uh, and if, if this holds, then we say that the scheme is recipient unlinkable. And out of the box, self-address schemes provide these two guarantees. But, but uh, as I'm going to show, um, this, this is not the case because, uh, because of uh, user behavior. Okay, so um, how much recipient anonymity Umbra, Umbra users can have? So the first heuristic, uh, it, if you are Interpol, your job is that you have recipients, you know the recipient's public keys, those are the users who registered to the Umbra smart contract. And if you are Interpol, your job is that given a stealth address, you want to connect the stealth address to the public keys, uh, which is the real recipient of the transaction. And a lot of times what we saw, and this we define as the first heuristic, if the user withdraws the money from the stealth address to the recipient address, then we can conclude that this self address is owned by this recipient guy. So this is the stupidest thing that you can do. And this, as I'm going to show in the evaluation section, a lot of users did this. Um, another easy way to link staff addresses to recipients is uh, if, if the user just withdraws money from the staff address back to the sender address. That's, I think, uh, either for users are doing it either for testing purposes or maybe they just want to farm the airdrop. Uh, Umbra stated multiple times that they are not going to have any airdrops, but maybe this is the case why users just increasing their Umbra usage. But seemingly, this at least to me, this doesn't make much sense, this user pattern. Um, and we also define two more, which re reduces recipient unlinkability. Um, so if there are multiple staff addresses and the user withdraws it to uh, an, uh, an address, to the same address, then we can conclude that heuristically at least, that these staff addresses are owned by the same person. So this breaks recipient unlinkability. Similarly, if there are three different staff ad addresses, ABC, and both or all these withdrawal transactions have a unique gas price or transaction fee, if you don't know what the gas price is, if they have a unique transaction fee, which is uh, which we didn't see before on the blockchain, then we could conclude that most likely these withdrawal transactions are sent by the same wallet. Mm -hmm. So this also breaks uh, recipient unlinkability. Um, okay, so what we have seen is that the first two heuristics, these the two simplest heuristics, already de-anonymize or allow us to link stealth addresses to the recipient, like um, almost more than 50%, at least in case of mainnet, arbitrary and optimism. Um, so it's quite shocking. So even though the cryptographic protocol would give recipient anonymity, um, users completely screw it up and, and basically nullify all the anonymity guarantees that they could have gained. Um, so um, the entropy of uh, the recipients is, the, so if there is a self address on chain, then the anonymity set of this single self address is all the re registered public keys. And this would give a lot of entropy, like all the public keys in the registry smart contract has equal probability to be the owner of a specific staff address. But since um, heuristic three, if you remember, this, this was heuristic three, allows us to cluster these staff addresses together, um, decreasing the, the entropy largely. So uh, now we, we can conclude that many staff addresses are owned by the same person, by the same public key. Uh, we don't know which one, but we can. We are sure that they are owned by the same person. Um, and what we can see in this uh, graph is that many there are handful of people who are uh, have many hundreds or dozens of staff addresses, and they withdraw it to the same uh, address. Okay, all our code is open source. Um, you can use this uh, nice. QR code, or you can just go to Alex um, GitHub account. And uh, yeah, so what are the countermeasures? It would be nice if uh, 
wallet software sh could prevent these leakages, like at least warn the user that, hey, don't withdraw your money back to the registrant address because that's just stupid. Um, I mean, in in account-based currencies, like Ethereum address reuse should be discouraged, but it's kind of difficult because, uh, yeah, address reuse is kind of encouraged by all the DeFi protocols and for reputation and whatnot. Uh, okay, so, I guess many, many more possible heuristics could be employed, like wallet fingerprints. Um, I, I, I would be really interested in cross-chain leakages. So all these L2s, like Arbitrum Optimism, uh, use the very same address format that Ethereum mainnet uses. So if you if you can link or de-anonymize someone, let's say an Arbitrum, then you could transfer this knowledge to uh, Ethereum or Optimism and other layer twos. So I think this cross-chain leakage, at least for Ethereum, I'm not aware if anyone did this. Um, so I think it's it would be nice if somebody would have the energy and time to do it. Uh, and like in Bitcoin, there's at least existed Samurai and Wasabi, but for Ethereum, there's no privacy preserving wallet, which which takes care of user privacy, both on chain privacy and 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 uh, peer to peer privacy. So it would be nice to have such a tool. Uh, yeah, and if if you have uh, time and energy, I think it, it would also, to, it would be interesting to conduct a similar investigation for Aztec and Railgun. Um, yeah, thanks. And let me know if there's any questions.